Okay, oh, and welcome to another episode of Pieces of Time. And I, I bring to you, excuse the mess. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm experimenting with LED, LED lights. I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to fuse them with some mascarpone. Um, unfortunately, it just doesn't want to blend. You know. Anyway, no. As you can hear, that's just full of parts and stuff. I bring to you Metamech. Excuse me, Metamech the Third. Beautiful piece of time, timepiece. Did you like the way I did that? It's a beautiful timepiece. It is um, fabulous Art Deco style timepiece. It is not an automatic, obviously. It's not a hand wind one. It is an electric clock again. Um, and this video, well, firstly, you know these. They're becoming a bit of an addiction for me, these uh, clocks, as these things often do. And, it, it, you know, it, it, it is a, a chore almost. It is almost the hardest of work to try and stop myself just buying all the ones I see on eBay, you know. Um I've actually, I'm putting off, um, obviously we've got this, this virus going around now, but um, for ages I was putting off um, even going to second-hand shops because I just thought if I see one I will buy it and it will probably be a bad move because it will probably be broken. Um, however, this particular one, I saw it and the gentleman online said it was working, it was moving, but it was very noisy. But I've long since loved these electric clocks. Since I was a child, we used to have a big Smiths clock on the wall. Probably something my dad half inched from a factory somewhere where he worked. And, you know, they were probably getting rid of it. And he went, I'll have that. I'll take it home and we'll stick it on the wall. And, and I just remember seeing the wire come out the bottom of it. And it used to go into a cupboard under the stairs where it was then plugged into a small plug socket. You know, a single plug socket. A single plug socket, funnily enough, which is still in that cupboard under the stairs at my mum's house. And it's got a Bakelite style, this kind of, you know, like the old light switches? It's got a Bakelite plug socket on it. I might steal that, actually. I might undo it from the wall and use it. Try and put a new back on it, maybe. Because plug sockets, it is a three-prong plug. Um, and it had a, an adapter, like a little, excuse me. And it had a like a little adapter, which was about year big which was a two pronged um so it turned the two prong plug into uh, a wire to plug into a normal plug socket which is awesome that's how i remember it i might be wrong <laughs> uh, but yeah it's becoming an addiction uh, anyway so the point of the video let me just let me just tidy up this area um cuz it's it's actually doing my nutting looking at it through the screen I'm going to tidy it up and we'll we'll come back and we'll share the rest of it. What I really love about these, unlike the one, in, you see the one in the background there, which I've got a video of also, it doesn't have the, it doesn't have the sweeping second hand. And that's what I really love about these, these clocks. So what I wanted to show you was that this, this, this um, particular clock came to me, it had it had quite a noisy rotor on it, so the electrical rotor in the back. Again, if you look back to the uh, the Smith's electric clock or the Smith's electric wall clock, the electric the, the, the little rotor is the thing that actually keeps the the clock moving. Um, around the back, and they should do they should they should make no more noise than a light bulb buzz. If they're making any more noise than a light buzz, a very light buzz, less than a fridge might, you know, even a modern fridge, they should be quieter than that even. Um, I want to just try and try and get this am amplified on this, on me, 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 um, 
my camera. See if I can do that by touching at it. So you might be able to just hear that vibration. Um, and that's all you should be able to hear. There should be any any noises. It means there's more more friction than anything. Okay, so and all I wanted to show you that was was that they're worth buying some of these. You know, if they're a little bit noisy, providing providing you know if they're saying that it runs but it's noisy, get it bought, get it bought, and get it oiled. You will not be disappointed. Um, other other little things to, to of note is things like brass. You know, in terms of in terms of brass. Um, this this particular clock had some corrosion. Uh, this one, you can just about see there's a few little dents there of corrosion, but literally a very low low grit. Low grit wire wool and some ha elbow grease, and then and then finally some actual brass or sorted that out. Small dint in the bezel, which I pushed out a little bit. A small dint. It was quite a big dint in the bezel, as you can see. It's caused the dint and the shattered the, the chip out of the the crystal were both. Uh, I think they were both um, connected. But apart from that, I did nothing. I've, I've polished the wood with a bit of wood polish, bringing the shine back up, and that's all. You know, I didn't even touch this piece of brass at the bottom. I just, I just wanted to leave it. There were no corrosion on it, so I left it. Less is more in these sorts of instances. But that, that, that will now run for another 20, 30 years before it needs another oiling. The problem is with these things is when people buy them, the original owner sort of he knows how to look after it. You know, he knows that he can just take it to a clock shop. Etc. Etc. And he'll just bung a bit of oil in there. Maybe clean up the rotor, take the rotor out, clean it up, clean clean the uh, pivots that it, it runs on, and and reapply some oil. Whereas the guy you, the guy who um, inherits it, the guy who buys it off him, the guy who takes it off the original owner he doesn't know that he just thinks oh it's an electric clock it should run forever on its own well another 20 30 years down the line i mean this is probably 1950s maybe okay so in the 1980s it was already 30 years old okay and at that point it's probably been oiled at that point and then he gives it to his son or his son takes it home and he goes nice clock that do you want that love yeah love do you want to My dad's giving us this clock. Do you want it? He says he don't need it anymore. He's bought himself a quartz. Yeah, yeah, go on. Is it electric? Oh, that's a good one. I have to change the batteries. And that's the, that's the end of it. They plug it in and they think that's how you look after it. Unfortunately, that isn't, you know. Now, in the worst case scenarios, they end up kaputted. Best case scenario, they end up with someone like me who has actually figured out how to fix them, figured out how to... Not fix them, I suppose, but, you know, oil them, treat them properly, clean them. Um, this is quite a modern one, actually. This could well be a 60s clock. Um, I left some of the tarnishing on here. There's a little bit of tarnish underneath the, um, the lacquer, because they get lacquered. The top's still lacquered. Probably should have taken that off, but, you know... I do love the brushed brass effect. It's better than polished brass. So, just a quick update on that. It can be done. These were soaked in lemonade for about a week. Once it, once the lemonade had done its job, they went a bit green because they were on the windowsill. That win that green stuff comes straight off. Um, dead easy. The, the, the bezel, I just straightened it out and gave it a little light polish with brass. So just to, but I really liked it because it's got a dark background. I really liked it the way it was. Um, sorry, I'm just going to move that like that. So, I left it the way it was, and that's that really. You know, there's no more... 
nothing much else necessary. Um, yeah, I didn't do anything about this this uh, little scratches here. Just leave them. If you start mainly because I haven't got I haven't got the, a clear. If I had a clear varnish, I could simply um, give that a very 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 light sanding with some wire wool. Very 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 light sanding with wire wool, and then just give it a few strokes of uh, varnish, and that would sort it out. But what I'm saying is, if you do see these and you're interested in these clocks, it's dead easy to pick one up. You just got to look at my old, look at my Smith's video. And, you know, the, the brass is always fixable. Brass is always fixable. That's the idea. That's the whole point of this video is that brass is fixable. And if you see one of these with brass on, even the wood is fixable. I've chosen not to because I want it to look like a 1960s clock. I don't want it to look brand new. Christ, I don't want it to... It ruins it. You, you, you're, you're, you, you know, you're liable to ruin it. But I knew it was I knew it was a good one because of the, the you know, the the... the the movement holder was in such good condition, um, and I just thought well, that's probably been sat in a that's probably been sat in an old people's home that for the past thirty years, and now it's being sold. Uh, beautiful baker light there. You can see the tortoise shell effect of the baker light. It's lovely, isn't it? Look at that tortoise shell in the light. Beautiful. It's still in really good condition. Okay, thanks for watching again. Um, just little little things I just want to share with people. I really want to do some more videos, you know, especially at this time now. We're we're in we're in uh, some serious times in the world, and um, if we can, if I can offer some light relief for myself as well as my viewers, then I'll do that. So I do appreciate all your subs and all the rest of it, and uh, keep safe. Try to avoid going out um, if you can. Or at least interacting with other people if you do want to go out. And uh, just, yeah, just stay safe. Thanks for watching and please do come again.